incredibly soft and and the colors this particular one worked up absolutely outstanding and I don't know why I'm always having issues focusing it's either my eyes the camera the lighting I don't know so just bear with me okay so I'm going to use this yarn for the tutorial I don't think it's as thin but I think it'll do just as good of a job um, and I wish I knew what this was I don't have anything in the middle which I usually do what I think this is is I used to get from Etsy um, book of the month yarn club and it would be the yarn would be dyed after a particular book this I don't know if it's showing up right in my monitor it does not look right but um, it has grays greens slate blues it's very subtle but gorgeous and I have been looking forward to working with this and this is perfect it is thicker so um, I don't think it matters this is a cowl and I'm going to show you how it really doesn't matter now I'm just going to cut this tape off I just put the tape on there when I wound it up so I could find my center pole okay so you can purchase this pattern on um, Lovecraft's website they have it or um, Ravelry and I'll have a link in the description box so I used like I said the four millimeter crochet hook I believe you can do this any yarn any crochet hook anything you want however to get the beautiful drape I would stay on the DK weight and down I wouldn't go higher than DK weight and um, you can customize this this does show you my gauge so nine stitches this the stitch in this pattern is actually called the iris stitch um, so nine stitches across equaled four inches for me and um, four inches high was six rows of the iris stitch but again this you can customize this so this is what you get when you get the pattern you'll have some pictures um, the finished size once it was folded in half like so it's folded in half that was 16 inches by 9 the way I did it very simple stitches in this and even though I'm using a slightly larger yarn um, I'm using the same size hook I'm still going to do this pattern exactly you're going to chain 40 it shows the multiple of three plus one so pretty much it, you can make this chain however long you want so we're going to just jump right in we're going to chain 40 we're going to put a slip knot on the hook there's so many different ways to do a slip knot I you can do I've seen people do this wrap it around their finger you know you just hold the yarn and wrap it around the finger twice hold it and put this loop over this one and then this loop over that one and there's your slip knot that's one way and then I just what when I do it every time I just kind of like circle it around and put this behind it and I just pick that up that's it there's a million different ways to do it and if you're new to crochet you're gonna find your way and you're gonna stick to it all right so chain 40 keep the chain loose always keep chains loose it makes it so much better because no matter what when you have a chain and you work stitches into it it always tends to curl or bow so just want to do it nice and loose okay so chain 40 and I will be right back all right so I just changed my 40 and row one we are going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook okay now I always 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 work into the back loops always this yarn for some reason is very crinkly <laughs> I think it's been balled up for a long time 
and what I mean by crinkly is you see how it's doing that so it makes my sister's stitches look a little wonky but if you look here if you're not familiar with the back loop bring you in if you look here here's a loop right here and like I said this is wonky so I don't know why it's so wonky and here's a loop see right here and here's a back loop now if you turn it over that's where you're going to see the typical chain and you are very if you're more comfortable going into the regular chain like normal that's absolutely fine um, I just prefer the back loop <clears throat> I always do it it gives a much cleaner neater finish to whatever you're working on now I've pulled my last chain pretty tight so I'm just going to undo it and then just redo it because as I was showing you it just pulled tight so as you make the chain it puts these two bars on the chain side and then there's a bar in the middle which is this yarn running through it and you can see that right there so that's the first chain we're going to count or the first bar here's the second one it's a little wonky but here it is here's the third one and here is the fourth one and that is the one I'm going to work my first double crochet into so double crochet you yarn over you insert your hook you pull up a loop, yarn over and you pull through two loops and then you yarn over and pull through two loops and that's a double crochet. Okay, so we did a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Now we're gonna chain two and we're do, gonna do one single crochet in the same chain, okay? So I'm gonna chain two and then I'm gonna go right back into that same back bar or same chain, I'm gonna do a single crochet. Now I'm gonna skip two bars or chains. So I'm gonna skip this one, and then I'm gonna skip this one, and I'm gonna work into the third one right here, and I'm gonna put two double crochets and I'm going to chain two and go right back into that same space and put a single crochet. Now the first the first one that we made if you remember we went into the fourth chain from the hook so this counts as one double crochet this is the second one then you have your chain two and the single crochet and now you're just going to repeat that pattern to the end of the chains and then we're going to turn so I'll do a couple more with you so we're going to skip this bump we're going to skip this bump and we're going to go into this wonky one right here so you're going to yarn over and do a double crochet and again if you don't know yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two then we're going to chain two and we're going to go right back into that same space and do a single crochet. All right, we're going to skip two. We're going to skip this bump. We're going to skip this bump and we're going to go into this third one. We're going to yarn over and insert our hook. And you're just inserting it behind that bump. So you'll have one loop there. And you're going to yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then you're going to put another double crochet yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now you're going to chain two and then you're going to put a single crochet okay let's skip two go into the third yarn over insert your hook and we're going to put two double crochets in that same space one Two, and we're going to chain two we're going to go back into that same space and do a single crochet so that's our pattern we're going to skip two put 
two double crochets, a chain two, and a single crochet all in the same space or back bump or stitch or chain, whatever you want to call it. So I'm skipping two. I'm going to put two double crochet. That's one double. There's my second double crochet. I'm going to chain two and then go back in and single crochet. So let's just do this. You could just continue. I don't want to bore you while you're watching me. And you just go down to the end and I'll meet you at the end. I'm missing a section, so it's gonna look strange, like I'm not continuing. We chained 40 and we did the first row and I was gonna meet you at the end of the row, I think, and I can't find that recording, so I apologize. I was just editing the video and I found that out. So I just did a little sample here because my project's done. Um, so this was row one and I'm just, I worked it up to the last three stitches or chains and I'm gonna skip this bump, this bump and work into the last chain and do the same thing that we've been doing, which is a double crochet, another double crochet, a chain two, Move my cameras off. Let's see. And then we're going to do a single crochet. So two double crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet all in the same chain. Okay? And that's the first row. And now we're going to, you could turn your work and you could either chain three and that will act as your first double crochet but I like to do a stacking single crochet instead of a chain three so I just go right in I don't chain one or anything I just go right into that single crochet and I do a single crochet and that's going to leave you with these two bars I'm going to go into this bar here This is different yarn, it's just very splitty. Okay, and do another single crochet. So it's just stacking single crochets, and that, that's what's gonna act as my chain three. Be, feel free to do a chain three. This is just a personal preference of mine. Um, really, it looks fine either way. Okay, so now my second double crochet is gonna go right into this chain two space. Okay, so that's the two double crochets and then we'll chain two and then go right back into that chain two space and do a single crochet. So you probably guessed we're going to be working into the chain two space in every, every iris stitch from the row before. So essentially what we're doing is we're skipping this double crochet, this double crochet, this single crochet, and then going into the chain two space which is right after the single crochet. And we're going to work two double crochets. a chain two, and a single crochet. And again, if you have a hard time recognizing stitches and seeing, oh, is this the chain two, or is this the chain, it's just look at, this is a double crochet that you're skipping, this is a double crochet you're skipping, here's your single crochet that you're skipping, and the chain two is right after the single crochet. And we're just going to jump on over and do two double crochets. A chain two. And a single crochet. And that's it. You're going to repeat this for every row. You're just now, from now on, you're going to just be working into the um, chain two spaces of the row before skipping over the two double crochets and the single crochet and after the single crochet doing the iris stitch. Double crochet, another double crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet. Okay, let's jump on over to the next chain two space right here after the single crochet and two double crochets
a chain two and a single crochet. And then the last one, we're going to jump over this double crochet, this double crochet, this single crochet, and then the chain two. We're going to do our last one. Again, mine was quicker because I just did a little sample to show you guys since I don't know what I did with that. I filmed it and I can't find it. Okay, chain two and single crochet. So now, again, move on to the next row. You can do a turn and chain three or you can do what I do, which is go right into the single crochet and do a single crochet and then go into the... That loop was too big. Go into the single crochet, do a single crochet, see those two loops, go into the one that's on the inside, do another single crochet, and that's just stacking two. I just think it's neater than a chain three. Totally up to you though. And then it, go, put the other double crochet in there, chain two, single crochet, jump over everything to your next chain two, and repeat. It's very mindless. You're not going into stitches, which I always think makes projects go much quicker, and it gives a really pretty pattern. Jump over everything, go into your chain two with two double crochets, a chain two and a single crochet, all in the same chain two. All right, so now that I showed you row two, and you're just going to repeat this over and over, I do 70 rows you feel free to do as many rows as you want. If you want your cowl being longer on your neck, do more rows, okay? So when you're done, when you're happy with how many rows you do, meet me back here, and I will show you how we finish it off, adding a row of half double crochet on the side that we finish, and we're gonna join some yarn and add a half double crochet row on the other underside of our chain where we started simply putting two half double crochets in the two chains that we skipped and one half double crochet and you can easily see the chain here that everything is worked out of so that's where we're going to put one half double and then the two chains that we skipped you're going to put two half double and that's we're going to do that very end to help when we join both rows will have half double crochets and it makes for a very easy nice clean join so take your time relax enjoy it back and forth, watch some TV, go outside, get some fresh air, whatever, and just enjoy the repetitiveness and take your time. And I'll see you when you end with the however many rows you do. All right, so I should be back right now finishing my 70 rows, but I ran out of yarn. So I just grabbed a gray um, Premier Everyday Anti-Pilling that I had. <laughs> doesn't look great, but for tutorial purposes, I think it's fine, and it might even be fine to wear once it's all done. We'll see how it looks. But I wanted to come back and show you how you do the last row. Now, I am not doing 70 rows. Um, this will just be a small cowl, not like a long um, accessory type thing that I showed you in the beginning. Let's see, this is only going to be, let's see, folded in half. Twelve and a half. And the original one was sixteen. Um, and the original one, I think, was nine inches. And this is 11 and a half wide. So the dimensions are a little different. But again, because we use different weight yarn. But I also wanted to come on, in case you purchased my pattern, there is a mistake. Right here I have on the 71st row to put two, I said, single crochets in the last single crochet. This should be half double crochet, not a single crochet. So I'm gonna to have to go online somehow and make corrections on my Ravelry and Lovecrafts, which is where this pattern is available. Okay, so for the last row, I'm just gonna back it out a little. 
Now I'll just take it out all the way. If you hear that scratching, I don't know if you hear it, it's my cat. <laughs> she's in my bedroom, which is on the other side of this room, and she's scratching at the wall for some reason. Okay, so let's say you just finished your 70th row, or how many, how, how many rows you want to do, and you just did the, um, you just finished here with the iris cluster stitches. Okay? So all we're going to do is chain one and turn. And we're going to make this a nice even row so joining is e easier. And I'm going to just show you because in case you're kind of new to crochet or you're not used to these stitches that are all like crunched together sometimes it's hard to know where to put your hook so I'm just gonna try really hard to show you guys so what we're gonna do is put a half double crochet in every single crochet and every double crochet now if you remember the pattern we did two double crochet chain two and a single crochet so now we turned our work so the single crochet is going to be first. Let me zoom you in so we can make sure you can really see this. Okay, right here is your single crochet. And that's where you go in, the two top loops of your single crochet. Then you're going to see the chain two you're going to skip that. You're not going to put anything in this space right here. And then here's a double crochet. And if you look up, this is where you put your hook under those two loops. And then here's the other double crochet. And you go under these two loops. And it just looks like this right here is the second double crochet. And it's just, it kind of looks funny. It kind of looks open. But that's just because you do the double crochet right off so you finished remember this is the other side you did the single crochet and then you started in the next chain two space with your double crochet so this kind of just stretches out a little that's why it looks like that but that's the top of your double crochet your second double crochet once you turn so again you go into your single crochet whoops sorry and then here's the double crochet here's the top of it right here and then you go into the top right here of the next double crochet. And you're going to just put half double crochets in those areas. So let me show you what that looks like. Yarn over, insert your hook in the first single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. That's a half double. So now we're going to skip this chain two and we're going to go in the top of this double crochet right here and we're going to do a half double crochet and then we're going to do a half double crochet in this double crochet okay now we're just going to do a half double in this single we're going to skip over this chain two we're going to go into the top of this double crochet and do a half double And then the next double crochet, this right here is the top. And just put a half double. And we're just going to do this all the way around. And I'll meet you back here at the end. All right, we're coming up to the end. Uh, where I wrote the mistake in the pattern. Okay, this is the second to last iris cluster. And now here is the last single crochet of the row and in the pattern it says two single crochets no you do two half doubles in here one two in the same single crochet and then you put one in each of the double crochets and these are hard to see but here's the top of this one and the last one was a chain or I do the stacking single crochet and that's what this is and right here that's the top of it. 
So now this means we have 40 half double crochets. And you could finish off and cut your work. An option. So if you just join to this chain, this is the chain 40. One, two, three, four, five. You see them? Oops, no, you don't. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. If you keep counting, you're gonna have the 40 chains, okay? That we did. And if you join there, it's fine. This is how I did my mother's original one. But it's gonna pull like this all the way. And it kind of looks like a ladder. I join with a single crochet, so it's very secure. But you see these bars? You'll see them. If that doesn't bother you, then just join into these. You know, you have a chain and you line it up with your half double crochet stitch and there's 40 on this side, 40 on this side. And that's what you can do. But if you want a more solid look, attach your yarn. Now, if you remember, we did 40 chains and these these chains this three right here one two three and then we did our first stitch in the fourth chain so all right here the, the double crochets the single crochet the chain two is coming out of this chain and then we skipped two and then we went into this chain and then we skipped two and we went into this chain so no matter what you put here, okay, when you pull it, it's going to look like that. So the only thing you could really do is join the row underneath with the row on top. Join your yarn. Now, these two I'm going to put together. So that's, I'm going to put a half double crochet in here, the one I just joined to. Now, this is the chain that, because remember, I go into the back bump. So this is the back bump and this is the chain. So it's pulling. So the only thing I could suggest is right here, if you join yarn over from down here and you just include that and you do a half double crochet. And you have to make sure you have 40 half double crochets. So right here, I really don't have to join anything but there's two chains, so I'm going to do two half double crochets. Okay, and now here, again, you're going to want to pick up anything here to, to pull up this line. You just go under that and include it. Now, here's your chain two, just go through that and put two. Now let me just show you what it's doing. It's making it look a little neater. So when you pull it, yeah, you're still gonna see that, but that's, that's the pattern, if you pull the pattern anywhere. So I'll do this with you. I don't know what I just went, oh, so here's the two in the and the two chains that we skipped. Here's the one right there. So now I'm going to do the two and the two chains that we skipped. And now here is the chain that everything's coming out of. So I'm just going to kind of like go in there and grab it so it comes up. And then the two chains that we skipped, we'll put two half double crochets. There's the chain we put everything in. Here's the two chains we skipped. Put two in here. Now, if you're having a hard time seeing this one, because the two chains we skipped is pretty obvious, 
But right here, remember, when we did it in the beginning, we skipped two chains and then in, the, in that chain we put two double crochets, a chain two, and a single crochet. That's what this is. But I did it in the back bump. So these are the these are the two loops on the other side of the chain. And this is the back bump. Oops, right here, if you stretch this part, here's the back bump. See all these stitches are coming out of it. So that's where I'm gonna put my hook under the back bump and those two bars of the top of the chain. So it's grabbing the whole thing. That came out, so I'm just gonna put it back in. Sorry, slipped off. Okay, here's the two chains that we skipped. And just continue. In this pattern all the way down. And you should end up with 40 half double crochets. Okay, so now we have 40 here and 40 here. So joining should be a piece of cake. So to join, chain one. There's no right side or wrong side since we went back and forth, but if there's a side you prefer the way it turned out, have that go on the inside. So when you fold it over, have that be the one that's covered up. Have this side that you don't like as much on the outside. Okay, so you're gonna chain one. And you're going to turn and you're going to go in the first chain both loops on this side and then you're going to go in your first half double crochet. I shouldn't have said chain but oh. gotta find it. Oh, this is the last one. Okay, it's right here. And we're going to just do a single crochet. Now you can do a slip stitch if you prefer, but my slip stitches, I always it always pulls and puckers. So you go into two loops, under two loops on this side, and then the corresponding stitch on the other side, two loops, and a single crochet. And you're just going to do that all the way down. And since you have 40 and 40, it should line up perfectly. Just make sure you're doing two loops and two loops. I'm just going to do this all the way down. Okay, and then you could just finish off.
Okay. Let's lift you. So it's nice and even now. And now all you got to do is weave in your ends before you turn it the right side out. And this is pretty easy because you have all these nice little bars. Now, remember, this is the inside of it. So I like when I have bars like this going literally weaving up and then over this one and then under this one and then over this one. It really helps it not coming out. And then I go back the opposite. I was under this one, so now I'm going to go over this one and then under this one. Over. Under, over, and back. And that's good enough. And I'll finish this. I'll speed this up so, again, not to bore you guys. Okay, all my ends are weaved in, so let's turn it right side out. Yeah, my joint looks a little thicker because this yarn's thicker, but I think that looks perfect in my opinion. I, I like that joint. Now, by adding the additional half double crochet on our original chain. When you pull it, it doesn't give you that ladder effect. So this is more like a cowl because I made mine smaller, but it's super pretty. And I'll show you it on my, well, yeah, I'll show it to you. I'll show you a picture at the end of this so you can see what it looks like on my mannequin. So I apologize for the mistakes in the pattern. Again, I'm going to put out a correction. So the main tube, the mistake was this should say half double crochet and then joining the ends, I'm going to give the option of adding that extra row of half double crochet. Okay. Um, and then I'll put the correction out so you won't get confused. But I hope you liked this tutorial. It was a little bit all over the place, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments or email me. My email is always in the description box and I will be happy to answer the questions. And I think this will be pretty even though it has this because I have a feeling when you put it on, you're not even going to see that. And this yarn really, I hope you guys can see how beautiful it is. And this texture, I love this texture. It's it's a little bit, I mean, it kind of looks like little slanted shells, but I think it's really pretty. And my mom's came out absolutely stunning because it was a lighter weight yarn. Um, so like I said, I would not go over, um, definitely don't go over a four weight. I think DK would be the biggest I would use. Um, this was probably DK and this is a four weight. I mean, it still looks pretty. Actually, I stand corrected. If you're going to use it for like more of a warm, wintry kind of cow, that looks pretty because you um, it's more of a stitch definition. Yeah, I think it's pretty either way. And what I love is that you don't have to do anything on the sides. Look at this beautiful little scalloped border it gives you automatically. Isn't that cool? I love that. All right, as always, if you guys make this, please post a picture of your final object on my Facebook group, which will be linked down below. I hope you guys are doing great, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.